We're going to be sewing Macaul's M6044 and we are doing the view with the long sleeves but without the pockets and on the back is going to have this yoke here. I'm going to assume you've got your pattern pieces ready. This is a pattern that I've already sewn so many times before. I always like to put the dates when I've sewn it and I'm making a Christmas version in this lovely stag cotton poplin. Okay, so first step is to go cut out according to the instructions. All of the pattern pieces have been cut out now. So the next step is to cut out all the interfacing. So you need one piece of interfacing for the collar, one piece of interfacing for the under collar, two pieces of interfacing for your sleeve cuffs if you're making the long sleeved uh, version. And you're also going to need some interfacing for your button band. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut those out and then fuse them and then we'll get on to the sewing. I've interfaced all of the parts that need to be interfaced and I'm going to leave them um, until tomorrow just so that they can condition before I start sewing. So everything is prepped now. I've got my thread sorted. The interfacing has been done. Everything is cut out. So we're going to go straight into sewing the next time we come back. Okay, so once we've allowed the interface pieces to condition by allowing them to cool down on a flat surface, we're ready to start sewing. So mine... Um, I did this 24 hours ago, and so now we're ready to start sewing. You also need to decide on the color of thread that you're going to use, and I always make sure I preload a minimum of two thread spools before I start sewing. You need to load up um, two bobbins so that when you're in the middle of sewing and your bobbin runs out of thread, you don't have to stop and rewind it up. So... Um, for this particular one, I'm going to, hmm, probably going to go with the black, if I have to be honest. So yeah, so we're going to load up the bobbins with the black um, and make sure that the overlocker is already loaded up with um, the color that you want to use and then we'll start sewing. Okay, so here we go. So I just wanted to point out that I'm not actually going to be putting a pocket on here. My husband, whom I've made this shirt for many times and many other different shirt sewing patterns, he really doesn't like having a pocket because he says he never uses it. So I don't put a pocket on. But if you want to put the pocket on, you just go ahead and, you know, you just put the pocket on in the normal way that you would sew um, a pocket. I'm also not going to be putting in the back shoulder yoke uh, thingy but if you wanted to put that this is your back pattern piece which is cut on a fold and these are your lines your your placement lines for the shoulder yoke pattern piece i'll just show you what that looks like and what you have to do with it in case that's the option you want to go for this would be your shoulder yoke um piece right you could fold it along the center back and then cut it on the fold but basically what you do is you cut this out you press it under along this seam here and then you just place it over the right side of your fabric and then you sort of top stitch it down and that's just simply what you have to do. For this particular print, my husband doesn't want to have this um, yoke. He doesn't want the stags to be interrupted. So I'm not actually doing this option for this particular shirt. But it's a really simple thing. If you wanted to do it, you just cut it out. And you press under that seam. And you place it over. And then thereafter, you treat this as one pattern piece. It's the same with the shoulder yokes if you wanted to do those as well you just um, cut it out press it under and then top stitch it along the seam and then baste it along over there but we're just going to jump straight in to the point where i'm at which is we're going to take our fronts and our backs and we're going to sew them along the shoulder seam I also wanted to point out that on your back pattern piece, you want to make sure that you notch that center back point along the neckline. This will come in very handy when we're actually constructing the collar. So we need to be able to have that so that we know that's the center back on the back. 
So this is your front and this is your back and we're just going to sew along the shoulder seams, do both sides at 5 eighths of an inch. Right, so those are your shoulder seams sewn. We're not going to go to the overlocker straight away. We're actually going to sew up the undersleeve next. The way that I do things is a little bit different um, because I incorporate industrial sewing techniques in my sewing. But trust me, everything will make sense. We're going to do as much sewing as we can before we move on to do as much overlocking as we can before we move on to doing as much pressing as we can. So right now I want you to grab your sleeve pattern pieces and then we're going to do those. So your sleeve pattern is made up of two pattern pieces, right? This is the sleeve front and this is the sleeve back. What's important for you to notch is this point here. You want to mark that because this is the point which is going to create what's called the sleeve placket. But this is a placket unlike anything you've probably sewn because I personally haven't seen a placket like this in any other sewing pattern. But the key thing is to make sure that you mark those points there. And what you're going to do is effectively we're going to be sewing our seam from this point here all the way up and then as we press it under like so this is going to create the opening on which you attach your cuffs so key point make sure you mark those and also make sure you mark your pleat points um, so we're going to do the pleats first and then we're going to do this seam so another point i wanted to make is this seam i'm going to french i'm going to do a french seam on it instead of finishing it with an overlocker like i'm going to do with everything else but if you wanted to use an overlocker you need to overlock these edges before you start sewing because it's quite difficult to try and overlock once you have a seam um, on there but i'm going to do a french seam where i fold it under and then i fold it under again and i'll show you what that looks like if you decide to follow along um, and in fact i probably advise that you just watch the next section just before you actually make a decision as to whether you want to overlock or you want to go ahead and try and do the french seam okay so we're going to do the pleats and then we'll move on to the main seam okay so when you're doing your pleats you want to be mindful of the direction that you're pleating it towards so you're going to be pleating it towards your um sleeve hem placket so you want to make sure that you're bringing these points over to that side there and what that looks like so i've got my notches there for the pleats and you're going to be bringing um, this side over here and we sew it down so i'm just going to do that now okay so that's the pleat sewn up and we press it towards the direction of where the sleeve placket is going to be i tend to finger press these things it's not that necessary to get up but yeah that's the beginning of a sleeve oh i love these snowflakes it's like different snowflakes <laughs> okay so now we've got our little pleat sewn in we're now going to go and do that front and back sleeve and we're going to sew it from the notch that you've made sure to mark on there all the way up to the end okay so this is the bottom of the sleeve i'm going to start sewing at that notch here and then i'm going to go all the way up to the end okay so this is the top of the sleeve where it's going to attach to the shoulder and we've got that seam going all the way down to where that notch is right okay so we're going to go take this over to the pressing board now and i'm going to show you how to do the french seam and create your sleeve placket all in one go okay so we've got the iron nice and hot now i use this teflon um iron shoes which are really great because it prevents the iron from really burning into your fabric so this is a fantastic piece of kit if you already don't have one okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna press this seam open hang on 
And I'm going to be using my Taylor's ham. Okay, let's so make sure that you can actually see that. And because this is a cotton poplin, I don't see the need to use um, a pressing cloth. So what we're going to do is I'll move this a little bit back so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to press this seam right here. We're going to press it open. Okay. Just like so. Ah, look how nicely this fabric presses. I love a fabric that responds very well to, um, to pressing. Okay. So we're going to press open the rest of this until we get to the point where there's the notch. Okay. I'm just going to show you what that looks like. Uh, hang on. And so we've pressed it right up to this point where it opens up. And what you're going to do is you're going to continue pressing this with the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay. So you're going to press that. And you're also going to press the other side as if you'd continued to sew along here, but you didn't. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to press it under again. And that's going to create this really nice flat felled. It's not a French seam. I've been calling it the wrong thing. A flat felled seam. Okay. So I'm just going to show you how that works. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. I've pressed this. And you see how you've already got your placket opening without all the fuff of trying to do a tower placket. Okay, so then our next stage is we're going to just tuck, fold this under, and then we will top stitch or edge stitch along there, creating a nice flat felt seam. And we'll also do that on this side. And we'll do that all the way down. And that creates your placket opening in one go, which is really brilliant and perfect for beginner sewers. If, because um, tower plackets, they're the least favorite of my, um, when I'm sewing shirts, that's the bit that I really don't like the most. But I really like this pattern because it does do this very simple placket so that's your next stage right now is once you've pressed it just tuck these under and then we'll edge stitch them okay so this is what it looks like now with the double fold under see how neat that looks it's a very lovely finish and then what we're going to do is we're just going to edge stitch as close as we can to that bit on the edge there and then that's it that will be your sleeve ready to be attached along the shoulder okay so you want to do this for the other sleeve as well obviously <laughs> Okay, so I'm getting ready to do the top stitching now or the edge stitching. Um, so I prefer to do it face up, but if you're happy with the stitch quality on the bobbin side, go ahead and do it um, with the right side against the feed dog. But I prefer to do it like this because then I've got a lot more control over how straight I can make this line. And I am just using my presser foot to sew 
this y this width from my seam and that nicely coincides with um, with this folded under seam is and another tip I can tell you is if you feel with your finger you'll be able to feel the ridge from where it's folded under and so you'd be able to use that to direct your um, your top stitching top stitching and then on the underside um, the stitching line is along there okay okay and this is now both of the sides done you can see that's been sewn down, so that's not coming off. And there is your placket already done. Okay, so you're gonna do this um, for both your sleeves and then we'll take it to the next step. And you wanna go ahead and just give that top stitching a press. And there we go. So what you can do if you want to is you can go ahead and reinforce this area just by doing um, a couple of lines, stitching along a couple of lines here perhaps using a very short stitch length and that will just give it a little bit of extra reinforcement but that's never been a problem personally for um, any of the shirts that I've made my husband but if you want to do that that's an option that you can also do but this this is how I do this shirt placket and it creates a very nice finish on the inside as well which looks like a flat filled seam Okay, so the next step is you're going to take your front, your shirt front, and we're going to overlock these edges here um, and then press them. And we are just going to stay stitch around this neckline as well so that it doesn't stretch out during the construction. So here's a shoulder seam overlocked and I'm going to press it to the back of the shirt. So another option that you have if you want to, you could then go ahead and top stitch along here or you can just leave it without the top stitching. The top stitching just makes it look um, a bit more spotty, I guess. <laughs> so just going to press that. Okay, so there's our top stitched shoulder seam. So... It was finished with an overlocker. Let's see, I'm going to... It was finished with an overlocker, and then we sewed it down. So it just, it just looks really nice. I like top stitching. I like doing the overlocking and then top stitching. It's not quite as laborious as doing a proper front, uh, flat filled seam, but it looks like a flat filled seam on the outside. 
So we've done that for both the shoulders. And then the next step is to stay stitch that neckline because it's cut on the bias. We don't want it to stretch out too much. See, it's already beginning to stretch out there. So we're just going to stay stitch this. Okay. So now that's stay stitched, that should stop our neckline from stretching out as we do the construction. The next thing is we're going to put the sleeves onto the main shirt. The next step is going to be doing the button bands. We're going to attach the button bands. This is completely different to the instructions that you see on the pattern itself. And this is because I found that it's better to do the button bands and then do the hemming last so that you can, if it's too long, you can adjust how deep you want your hem after you've gotten the person to try it. Because I have found that on other makes, I've had to um, reduce, make it a little bit shorter because it was just a little bit too long um, for my husband. So I leave the hem until last. But if you follow the pay, the envelope, instructions it will have you doing your hem much much sooner before you have the opportunity to actually really try it out so next up we're going to do the button bands okay so button bands have been sewn to the center front you're going to press the seam towards the button band and then you're going to grade it by trimming this interface Bit here and then we're going to turn this under by five eighths of an inch and then we'll fold it so that it goes over like that creating our nice placket that will then top stitch on this side <laughs> so first step you're going to press that seam allowance towards the button placket then you're going to grade the seam by cutting this, I use my pinking shears, we'll fold this under by 5 eighths of an inch, fold this, lining up this fold with the seam line, press it, and then we'll sew it. Thanks, you can switch off the computer now. Okay, so here's the button placket all done now. It's folded under, and that's your center. Um, your center front is somewhere here, but that's your edge. And as you can see, this folds over this seam line, and so you can now turn it round, and then you will edge stitch on the button placket as close as you can to this seam. And if you want, you can also add another line of edge stitching on here. And this is button placket number one done. And then do it for the other side as well. So that's the edge stitching done on there. And as you can see, it's got the button placket. And I'm just going to do another line of stitching Okay, so that's been edge stitched and that has been edge stitched and you have a lovely looking button placket. It's unfortunate that my pattern placement only has got the rears of the stags. Uh, here we go, we've got a face <laughs> over here. Um, but hopefully the other button placket has got better pattern placement. The next thing that we're going to make is the collar. 
okay um, and we're basically going to construct the collar and then we'll attach it on to the neckline so first of all you're going to take your upper collar pattern pieces of which you've interfaced one and then you're going to sew along those seam edges we're going to grade the seams and then we'll turn it under and then baste okay so first step is we're going to sew these two pattern pieces together here's a tip you might want to mark the point so i've used my seam gauge and the seam allowance is five eighths of an inch so i've just marked five eighths of an inch along there and then five eighths of an inch so i know that this is the point at which so i'm going to stitch da -da 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 -da, all the way up to here and then I'll turn and I'll do a 45 degree angle stitch and then I'll go straight and that makes it easier when you're turning the corner. So that's a little tip for you there. Okay, so there we have, you go all the way up there and then you just take one stitch across before you then do the straight one. It just makes it easier to get a nicer uh, point. So again, I'm going to use my pinking shears and we're just going to grade this. We'll press it before we turn it under. Okay, so once we've um, done the trimming, we're going to turn it under and I like to do this. So try and get in as much as you can. And I'm just gonna fold that little point in and then we'll push it out. Okay, and you sort of wiggle it a little bit just to get the point. I like to use a pencil just very gently, very, very gently push it out, and there we do. I'm happy with that. Yeah, okay, so we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And then we're going to press it, we're going to press it favoring this under collar bit and then we'll top stitch. So another thing that I also like to use for getting those points across is I'll use my tweezers as well. Um, if you didn't, if you are worried about marking your fabric and you very gently just push this out as much as you can without poking through it. Okay. And so there we go a lovely little point now to the pressing board okay here we go we're going to try and favor it so that the seam is on this side oops sorry okay just like that and grab your iron steam steam You're kind of trying to roll it so that the seam isn't visible on this side, but it's visible on this side because this is going to be the under collar. That's the bit that we're going to attach on to the neckline. So the collar is beginning to take shape now. So 
So the next thing is we're going to top stitch along here. It's up to you. You don't have to top stitch if you don't want to. But I'm going to top stitch using my presser foot as the distance uh, thing. And you're also going to want to baste this bottom here so that it doesn't shift that much. So basting is just where you used a, a longer stitch length. that's the top stitching done and you can go ahead and baste the lower bit together if you want to um, I tend not to I'm sort of perfectly fine going on to the next stage so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the collar stand pattern pieces and we're going to put those together right first thing we're going to do is with that uninterfaced collar stand we are just going to turn it under by five eighths of an inch and we're going to press that okay Turn it over. And so that's already turned under five eighths of an inch. Okay, so the uninterfaced one has been turned up five eighths of an inch, and this is how we're going to assemble the collar. You're going to take the interfaced edge, right, and you are going to put your upper collar in between the interfaced collar stand and the non-interfaced collar stand okay you're going to make a sandwich and the idea is that we are going to sew a seam along here and that's going to create the collar and the stand so the order in which you do these is very important because this bit is the one that's going to be showing on the outside of the shirt, the one that's interfaced. And then the one that's not interfaced is the one that's going to be touching the inside of the neck. Okay, so it's very important that you get this order correct. And at the same time, you want to make sure that the interfaced collar stand is the one that's going to be visible. Okay, so if you follow this order laid out like this, interfaced collar stand is touching against uninterfaced collar, and then you have your interfaced collar touching your uninterfaced collar stand. Okay, and then you have to just line up those notches this is where it was so important to make sure that you've got those notches so in my case i've got my center notch which is going to match up with the center notch on here on my collar and the center notch on the other one so i'm going to line those up together and then we're going to sew a seam that goes along here and when these are aligned, there should be enough of a seam here for you to attach this to the shirt. Okay, so we're going to go off to the machine now. Okay, so I wanted to show you what this looks like now. Okay, so we're going to sew from here using five eighths of an inch, and that's going to leave us enough to actually attach this on to the neck of the shirt itself. Okay, so we're going to go for it.
Okay. And so what we have is, to, oops, sorry. When you turn it over, once you've done your grading and such, and you turn it over, you have your collar and your collar stand attached. There. Okay. So you see. There we go. So now what we have to do is we need to go and grade all of these seams and then press this down and we'll have a collar ready. And just when you're grading this one, just to be on the safe side, I like to keep this as long as possible until I've actually sewn this on and then I'll cut it off. But basically we're doing that. Oh. Okay, so this is what this looks like graded. So I've trimmed this one close this one onto the next level and this one on the next level. And so now we're just gonna press, we're just gonna press that and then we'll have the collar ready to be attached to the shirt. So when you're pressing you're trying to make sure that this one is as open as it can be, the seam underneath, as well as the seam on the top. You hold it down and then press it. And then all the way around until you get to that end here. And you sort of have to really turn those corners out shift them a little bit making sure that everything is nice and flat and if you want to this is a useful point to use your tailor's clap but as you can see we can this is a rather unfortunate pattern placement but that's going to be sewn on to <laughs> but there we go Okay, so that's the front done. I'd also turn it over and go do the back as well. Just making sure that that seam is pressed nicely open. Okay, so we have a collar now. This is what the collar looks like. And now we're going to go and sew this to our shirt, to our neckline. Okay, so this is the shirt neckline. And so what we're going to do is just going to make sure that this is going in and we're going to attach it to our button band and we're going to go all the way around and matching up all of those notches along there. And then we're going to sew but being careful not to sew this down. So you kind of need to open this up and you're gonna sew your five eighths of an inch. And so what that will look like is that once you have sewn this, this will just tuck in here very nicely and that will form your collar, okay? So you wanna go ahead and you're gonna attach all of these matching up the notches along there. Okay, so I've used my wonder clips to line up the notches all along um, between the neckline and the collar stand. And then I'm going to sew it, this neckline, this uninterfaced part that's going to be against my feed dogs. And I'm just gonna to have to open this up so that I start sewing right at that 5 8 mark and we'll sew all the way along, making sure to keep this out of the line of fire, so to speak.
right so here we go so that's been sewn five eighths of an inch and you'll see that once you do all of your grading and your trimming there you go that will be done okay so now we have to go um, we're going to press this entire seam up towards the collar stand and then we'll do some grading okay so after that press okay so we're going to press everything up into the collar stand and the idea is that we then are able to just press it down voila you have a collar so there you go and it will look ever so nice on this other side yeah And we're very nearly done with the collar and then it's up to you whether you want to do some hand stitching to finish off that collar or you want to do it on the sewing machine okay so once you've pressed that we're gonna go ahead and do grab the scissors and we're gonna grade okay here we are everything is all graded now and so then what you're going to do is you're just gonna tuck everything under just like so, wiggle it in place, and then you're going to press it down, right? And then here you have the choice, if you want to, of doing a top stitching, an edge stitching line all along here and catching this as well, or or you can, if you want to, do some hand stitching, do some slip stitching to sew this down, if you wish. Now, personally, I like doing some hand sewing um, on here. So I'm going to show you how I do it. And then I'll also show you a top stitching, how that would work. Okay. Okay, so this is one of the few times that I'll use a pin just to pin that along the neck edge. And as you can see, we've got a pretty good looking collar, right? So, you've got two options here. You can go ahead and sort of top stitch along on this side and just being mindful that when you do the edge stitching, along the back here that you are actually catching this if you want to or another option is you can baste hand baste this down using long you know hand sewing stitches and then you'd be able to do your top stitching without having to worry that you're not catching it um, and personally i like to slip stitch all the way along here and then I will do my edge stitching just as a cosmetic feature. But I do like doing some hand sewing on the collar. Okay, so I'm going to do some hand sewing, just a simple slip stitching. And then we'll pick up on the edge stitch. All right, so I've prepared my needle and my thread. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to do a slip stitch um, along here. Okay, I just wanted to show you what it looks like. Um, so this has been hand stitched down using slip stitching um, and I just have to finish off this um, thing but it looks really nice and neat you could leave it at this point if you wanted to um, but I will show you how to do the edge stitching on there but we have a functioning collar right so here we go this is the collar all nicely done all nicely finished I just want to show you the um, hand stitching. If I can get camera focus. So there's some hand stitching here. It's called slip stitching. Okay. I prefer to do it this way, whereby I slip stitch this bottom bit so that it's nice and secure, and so that when I then do the top, the edge stitching along here, that this isn't going to move and look a little bit wonky. It only takes a few extra minutes to do, but it's definitely worth it to have a nicely finished collar. So the next thing is we're going to do some edge stitching all the way along here. So I like to start 
on this shoulder seam here so I'll start here and backstitch and then I'll go all the way around that way I can have my narrowest side of the presser foot helping me to do the edge stitching but if you have an edge stitching foot go ahead and use that I don't have an edge stitching foot I just do it the old-fashioned way okay so that's my shoulder seam and that's where I'm starting okay and as you can see I'm doing it this way so that I can use this shorter side of my presser foot to help me with the edge stitching Take it slowly and then use your hand to get up to that point, pivot, okay, and pivot some more. It's worth taking your time with this because you're just going to do it in one continuous stitch. And also because you're going to be feeding your fabric, your shirt, through this side of the sewing machine, this is why we do it before we attach the sleeves because the more pieces you add the more fabric you have to try and deal with and manipulate and move out of the way so this is why we leave the sleeves until last we get the collar in as soon as we can okay there we go so now that's all edge stitched and we've got a really nice finish on that collar i'm really very happy with this And then that's it that's your collar done and now we're going to grab our sleeves and we're going to attach them to the armholes next so this is what you should have at this stage you've got your back and you've got your front and you have your collar over there and then we're going to attach the sleeves in what is called flat construction so it's not a set in sleeve where you would normally put gathers and then you sort of attach it to the arms hole we actually um, sew it together in the flat and this is what it will look like so you want to make sure that you line up your notches so you've got a notch here that's going to show you where to put it on the shoulder and what you want to do key thing is to make sure that this seam here this is at the back okay you want to make sure this seam is on the back pattern piece and not the other way around just be careful of that I have made that mistake before so don't make the you know I made the mistake so that you don't have to make the mistake okay so we're just going to um, attach these and then we'll sew them up overlock and then do a line of t top stitching but it's coming along okay I just wanted to point out that when you are attaching your sleeve to the arms hole here, the armhole, your sleeve seam is longer than your armhole seam. And that's because it's got what's called a sleeve cap ease in it. But when you're sewing it, you need to make sure that you've got your sleeve pattern piece against the feed dogs. So that has to be at the bottom. And what that will do is that will make, that will ease in the extra length of seam that you have there. But when you're pinning it, make sure you match up your notches and towards the shoulder seam here, that's where you've got most of your ease. 
So I use my Wonder Clips. I prefer using Wonder Clips to pins for this sort of thing. But you'll see it looks a little bit like here. Let's see if I can get it to show you. Can you see that? So this is this is the shirt um, armhole and this is the sleeve. But when we sew it up, this is going to be eased in and that will create a bit of a cap. So don't worry if it looks like, oh my gosh, is this going to pucker? It isn't going to pucker. When you're sewing it, you're just going to make sure that you haven't got any tucks or any pucker in and the feed dog will do the rest as long as you make sure that your sleeve is against the feed dogs because they, they will do the job for us. And you're making sure that things are nice and flat and that the seams are lining up. Okay, make sure that things are nice and flat, that you don't have any gathers. All right, and you just keep going all the way around the curve. Okay, so here we go. This is what the seam will look like. As you can see, there's no tucking or no gathering. And if you look on the other side, you can see here that the feed dogs have eased this for us. So you can see this waviness. That's telling you that there was actually more fabric that has been eased in. And so when you press it, you sort of get this fullness on the sleeve itself. Okay, but as you can see, there's no tucking or no gathering on there. So it might, if it's your first time, um, it might, you know, take a couple of tries in order for you to get this right. But if you've got some tucks, that's no problem. The first time that I made it for my husband, he has some tucks on it and he still wears it, you know. But as you do more of it, I do encourage you to try and, um, you know, get this particular aspect much better. But you can see there. So just remember sleeve side down and the feed dogs will do the rest so you're going to do the same thing for the other sleeve and then you're going to finish off with your overlocker and then we'll press it so off to the overlocker now okay so now we're going to press it i've overlocked it i prefer to press this seam towards the shirt to favor the shirt and that's just because on some ready to wear shirts that I've seen that's how they do it so that's just how I do it so we're just going to press it towards the shirt like that and you'll need to use your tailor's hem because you've got this um, curve here and then we're, what we'll do is we'll then top stitch along that shirt to just create a nice professional looking finish so let's go ahead and press that and all that waviness will go once you actually press so you're going to do that all the way along and then back to the sewing machine to do the top stitching okay i'm now getting ready to do my top stitching this is the seam right here and i'm just using the width of my presser foot and i'm just going to stitch all along here making sure to use my finger to feel that the seam allowance hasn't shifted and gone the other way that does happen so you just watch out for that by making sure that you're using your fingers to feel the ridge 
Um, by all means, you don't have to do this step. You can just leave your seam as is if you want to. But I just like to do it because, I don't know, I love top stitching details on shirts. Okay, and there we have it. That's the top stitching done. Now we'll give it a press, a quick press, before we move on to sewing up that underarm seam, which is going to be all the way from the sleeve cuff right down to the hem. And then you'll be ready to try this on, on whoever is going to be getting it to make sure that the height, the length, the hem length is acceptable. Oh, I love this stage of sewing shirts because it's all coming together now. Okay, so um, let's go and give this a press. Okay, so at this stage, this is what your shirt is going to look like. You've got your fronts there, you've got the sleeve, and then you've got the back. And we're literally just going to fold it along this shoulder line here. Okay, and then we're going to sew one long seam from the sleeve all the way to the underarm and then all the way down to the hem, making sure that we match those notches that we have. And then we're going to overlock it and then press it down. And then we'll do the same for the other side. And then you can get the recipient or you can get yourself to try it on and make sure that you're happy with the length. Okay, so I'm starting over at the sleeve here. And I've just made sure that I've clipped the underarm seam so that that doesn't shift. And I'm just going to sew straight down. pivot onto the side seam Now the next step is to just overlock that and then we'll press it okay now that seam has been overlocked we're going to press it now and this is where your sleeve roll really comes in handy when you're doing these sleeves you're just going to slot it through as if it was an arm okay just like so i'm just going to make sure and we're going to press this seam to the back and you know it's the back because that's where your sleeve slit is okay so we're going to press this seam to the back and we're going to do that all the way down the side seam so our underarm and sleeve seam has been pressed and it's been overlocked and we've pressed it to the back you can stop here if you want to but I like to top stitch all the way along and as far as I get as I can into the arm itself um, but again you can just finish it at here and then move on to the next step which is going to be attaching the sleeve cuffs but I'm just going to show you how I like to um, do the top stitching Okay, so again here you can see I'm using the foot, the width of my foot um, for the top stitching line. So I'm just going to, this is the side seam, so I'm just going to top stitch all the way until the point I get to the underarm seam point.
Okay, so I've got to my underarm point, which is right there. And I'm going to go as far into this sleeve as is possible. And it's basically a case of I'll just be tucking it and tucking it and tucking it until I go in as far as I can. Okay. to show you what it looks like it literally looks like you've got a hole in here so as you go further down that sleeve seam this sort of mountain um, <laughs> gets higher and if you can see that so you just sort of you just keep on sewing and you just keep on um, tucking it and tucking it so yeah I only have about three inches left of the seam. to then pull out your sleeve grab the scissors and there we go I'll show you what that looks like so this is the sleeve seam and it's been top stitched and when you press it it's going to look very nice and, such, and there is our intersection, everything matching up nicely. Okay, so we're going to do the other side and then we'll start on the sleeve cuffs. Okay, so again, use your sleeve roll to just press that top stitching into place. And then we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, I just wanted to show you what that seam now looks like with the top stitching there. So it creates what's called a faux flat filled seam, which is like a, a fake flat filled. Because on the outside it looks like it's a flat filled seam, but on the inside it's just overlocked and then top stitched. So it's a nice neat way of making the seam look professional. This is what your shirt should be looking like now, looking like a good looking shirt. Now what we need to grab those sleeve cuffs and let's get started on them. Okay, so I've interfaced my sleeve cuff and I'm using a contrasting color for the inner cuff. So the first thing that you're going to do is your uninterfaced cuff piece, you're going to on this straight edge, you're going to turn that under 5 eighths of an inch and then you're going to press it. Okay, so that's been turned under 5 eighths of an inch and then we're going to sew 5 eighths of an inch all around, all the way to the end and then we'll do the grading and the pressing. Okay, so that's been sewn on and now we're just going to Grade along before we turn it out. Okay, I've used my pinking shears 
to do the grading and just gonna turn it around so one thing i like about this pattern is the cuffs actually have got a rounded corner which makes it so much easier so much easier than trying to get a pointy corner and it's also easier for aligning it so we're gonna do this and then when we press it we're gonna press it so that we're favoring the underside so that that seam isn't visible on this side but it's visible on get the camera to focus is visible on that side okay and then what's going to happen is we've got the five eighths of an inch seam that we're going to attach to the bottom of the sleeve and that will be our sleeve cuff done now you can if you want to i'll show you how to do the top stitching on the sleeve cuff okay so there's our sleeve cuff which has been pressed and when you're looking at it from this side you can't see that it's got a navy blue under sleeve okay so now we're going to attach it to the sleeve okay so we've got our lovely shirt here and then we've got our our sleeve placket opening and all you're going to do is you're going to line that up all the way around and then just like we did with the collar you're going to sew your five eighths of an inch seam here, making sure not to catch your under sleeve. Sorry, your under cuff. You want to make sure that you don't catch that. So you need to move that out of the way and sew down there. And the idea is that once you've sewn that and you've graded and trimmed, you're going to tuck it under like so. And then a voila you will have a sleeve cuff, okay? So, attach that. Okay, here we go. I've used my Wonder Clips and I've attached that to the sleeve hem. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to sew five eighths of an inch along here, making sure not to catch this under placket. Okay, so you gotta move it out of the way. And then we're going to sew it. I would advise having this uninterfaced part against your feed dogs because uh, we want that to be eased in nicely. So take that to the machine and get that done. Nope, this is what we don't want. Us. <laughs> this is exactly what we don't want, which is why it's posed. <laughs> you want to make sure that when you're sewing this, this is completely out of the way. Otherwise, you have to um, start again like I did just now. But mistakes happen when you're sewing. Um, and you just got to move on from them. So I'm just going to start again at that point. And I'm going to make sure that I've got this out of the way. And backstitch. And up we go. Okay, it's a sleeve. So you kind of need to, unless you have a sewing machine, that's got a sleeve, a free arm, you will need to sort of uh, fiddle around. Okay. And there we go. All right. So here we go. That's been sewn on. And then what's going to happen is we're going to do some grading. We'll trim this off and then we'll grade that down. And then this will get tucked in. And that will form your lovely sleeve cuff. And then what we'll do is possibly some hand stitching and then top stitching. But that's the sleeve cuff done. So I'm just going to go grab my scissors and we're going to do the grading. Okay, 
So here I've trimmed off the interface a bit and I've used my pinking shears. To, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck this in. Again, finger pressing really helps. So I'm just going to finger press it to get it to lay down before I then use the iron to give it that definitive press that's going to tame this seam and make it lie flat down forever more. So I'm going to do that. I have to snip that off. Okay, so now get that tailor ham, tailor's ham out and then we're going to press this down. Okay, so we've got it on the sleeve roll. Uh, of course, you would be doing this on your ironing board. Okay, so you're sort of, you're pressing this down. So we want it to lay nice and flat. It's only fiddly because I'm trying to record it, but when you're when you are doing it without having to record it, this goes by so much faster. Okay. And then when that's done, so you see that covers it over nicely. Okay, so that's this side done, giving it a nice press. And remember, we've pressed it so that we are favoring this side. That way we don't see this seam on the right side. So another, then I also like to just then give this seam on this side a good pressing before I go and do the edge stitching to get it really nice and as flat as we can get it to be. Isn't that beautiful? Look at those majestic stags. I love it. It's because I love this TV show called Outlander. And in season one of Outlander, the starting credits would have this majestic looking stag in the Scottish Highlands. And so each time I see this, um, stag with the antlers it instantly transports me back to that first episode of outlander there we go okay now off to the sewing machine i don't use pins um, i'll be able to just do the stitching along but if you wanted to you go right ahead and you pin this down and then you do your um, top stitching or your edge stitching along the edges of the cuff or if you didn't want to do any edge stitching or top stitching you could just go ahead and do your hand sewing and sew this down by hand and then you don't have any edge stitching but i'm going to do some top stitching so i'm going to take this over so i start my uh, top stitching where that pleat is i just find that that's a good point for me to start and i'm using the width of my presser foot and so I'll just go all the way around and do my back stitch right here. Okay, so this is what we have. That's been top stitched. Okay, and then the final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch in the ditch along this seam here, just so that I can catch the edge of this undercuff. And that will be your cuffs done guys um so the next thing will be to work on that hem okay so at this point we finished the cuffs and you can get the recipient to try it on in this case my husband has tried it on and we're just basically doing this to check the length this is why i leave the hem until last because for some people this might be um too long depending on their proportions now, I've made this obviously six times already for my husband, so we're kind of clear on what length we want. But the first time, the first couple of times that I made it, this was the stage that we went through to make sure that we got the 
the length that we wanted. So if it's okay with that, you're going to go ahead and we're going to do the hemming. And then the final step is going to be our buttonholes and then our buttons. But the shirt is looking very beautiful. So one thing I do um, before hemming is I clip those button bends together straight along because sometimes, despite the, my best intentions, sometimes this will happen where I've just, um, I somehow lose a quarter of an inch towards the hem. So I line this up and then I'm just going to cut cut this and this will make sure that when I do my hemming this is going to overlap perfectly and we're not going to have a jagged step here so we have that and that sometimes happens because of the feed dogs uh, and the direction of the sewing um, I mean you try your best but sometimes that that will happen and there's nothing wrong with just sort of like you know slicing that little bit off and then you've got this um, perfectly so I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to overlock along this edge here and we're just overlocking it not cutting anything off actually strike that I'm not going to overlock what I meant to say was I am going to um, baste do some basting stitches for the hem and then I'm going to fold it under and then fold it under again and I'm doing that because this is a curved hem and so there's some fullness that we're going to need to ease in okay so basting stitches along the hemline okay so I have just done the basting stitch which is a longer stitch length five-eighths of an inch five-eighths of an inch in and this is going to be our guide for pressing like so and then we're going to then press it again like so and that's going to create our narrow hem okay so these basting stitches here they just give us a good um, guideline actually a very accurate guideline and then we will take them off once everything is done so over to the pressing table now and we're just going to go around pressing and pressing I'm going to be using my Taylor's clapper for this going all the way around but as you can see this is giving you the nice curve okay so when you get to this curved bit here you're gonna find that it's really hard to try and get it to press down and lie flat and what you need to do is just do a few notches a quarter inch in and they will allow the fabric to ease out. So I'm just going to put just one there, another one there, another one there. And then now you'll find that you'll be able to press it down and flat. But you don't need a terribly deep, just even a quarter or even an eight, not a quarter, sorry, an eighth, an eighth of an inch in that lets out so that you get that curve another thing I forgot to say on the side seam in order to reduce the bulk I tend to just snip off 
that overlocked edge and that helps it to lie flatter okay here we go so this is what it looks like on the right side so that's your hem and now and i know this it does seem like it takes a while but it is so worth it to get that nice narrow hem finish now you're just going to fold it under just like this and again you will press along if you use pins you can use pins if you want to once you've pressed and then pin it i use wonder clips so basically we're just folding it under and then we're pressing it so i've used a wonder clip to catch that first bit there and then when you press it and then wonder clip it and that creates your lovely beautiful narrow hem Now this is ready to be sewn. I'm going to go and I will sew this, this side down against the feed dogs. And I will use my finger to feel where the ridge is and therefore where the stitching should go. So at this point, it's also a good idea to just do another check again where you line up your button plackets all the way to the end and just make sure that they're meeting up equally because sometimes things shift around but if you just do these quick checks you don't have to wait until you finish sewing it and then when you're putting it against each other you've got a little bit of a jog and that's very frustrating so always check along the way there we go so we're just going to go all the way around we're done now and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my unpicker and I'm just gonna remove this basting line here and then I'll give this a nice press and then the next thing is to set up your machine for the button holes so I'm not gonna use my Jones's vintage machine it doesn't do one step button holes I'm going to have to use my Husqvarna machine which is over there so I'm going to go set that up. Okay, so I've set up my Husqvarna for the buttonhole. So I've got the buttonhole foot. And I've done my test buttonhole. This is so critically important. You need to make sure that your buttonhole is going to work. And what I will do is I'll actually slit it open. And then I'll put my buttonhole, my button through just to make sure that it's fine. Okay, so I've cut it through. And now I'm just going to check that it goes through comfortably. Um, yeah, it's important to check these things. It doesn't take you that long, but sometimes if your buttonhole placement, um, for some reason, you, you might have it on so tight that it creates a, you know, a, um, a tight, a snug fitting buttonhole. So that's good to go. I'm sorted. So at this point, your shirt looks like this is complete, right? But we want to make sure that we get those buttonholes on the correct side. A couple of the shirts that I've made, I put the buttonholes on the wrong side. And although my husband still wears them, he does say he finds it just a tad bit annoying. So what I would advise you to do is just get um, one of the RTW shirts like I have here. And just by looking at that, I know that um, the left side has got the buttonholes. So this is the placket that's going to get the buttonholes. And also another one that I've made mistakes on before by putting the button and the buttonhole on the wrong side is with the sleeve placket. And so again, 
just have your RTW shirt nearby so that you know that this is going to be the again you know whoever you've made this for probably will still wear the shirt but they might just get a little bit annoyed when they're buttoning up and realize that oh it's on a different side so yeah so a little tip just have your RTW shirt nearby so that you can make sure that you're doing it on the right side so I've got left side so I'm gonna mark where the buttonholes are gonna go a little trick I use is just to use an RTW shirt that he already likes and what I do is I just line that up and I'm gonna use my friction pen to mark where these buttonholes are supposed to go and for me that's the quickest and easiest way to do it but it has to be with a shirt that he likes that he's happy with the button placement if not then you can sort of go ahead and try um, and use your own different measurements if you want to but this is the shirt that we always use um, for marking out the the buttonholes okay so I've used my friction pen to mark um, where those buttonholes are supposed to be and I'm just gonna go ahead and use my pins before I take this to the machine and start working on those buttonholes okay, so all of my buttonholes are done now and I especially love the contrast of the red against the navy there and then the next thing is I'm gonna put some fray check on these buttonholes um, and then I have to let the fray check dry before I cut open the buttonholes and sew my buttons on but we're nearly there now so I'm just going to grab the fray check. It's actually called fray stopper. I call it fray check for some reason. I, I've had this um, for over four or five years now. And this is so incredibly useful because um, it does stop the buttonholes from fraying. So if I show you look at my trial buttonhole without any fray check or fray stopper, you get these little icky bits but what you do is before you cut it open you put some of it just along the bit that you're going to cut open and it will stop these little fly away things from happening now I'm nearly out of mine I need to order some more so what I do is I will get put a little dot of the fray stopper on my little container here and then I use a pin just to get a little bit of it and then I dab it onto it. I found that to be more effective than trying to use, uh, let me show you what this looks like. <laughs> I found it more effective than trying to use this because you, you, you end up putting too much fray stopper. Um, so I find it just better to just get a little bit on here and then I use my pin. Okay, so for slicing through the buttonholes, I use this. Uh, this was a wooden block from my children's playroom. It works just as well. Um, and I also got um, a chisel. I love this. This does really neat buttonholes. So I'm just going to show you how... I slice through my buttonholes. Okay, so the fray check, fray stopper has dried. So I left this to dry overnight. You kind of have to be careful not to put too much on there. Otherwise you have a situation like this. This is why I always put it on the reverse side. So this is the front side. And I tend to put it on the reverse side rather than on the front. Because sometimes you do accidentally get a little bit more than necessary. But not to worry too much okay so I'm just gonna show you how I do this okay so I'm doing it on here get it out of its sleeve don't lose this because this edge is quite sharp when you buy it and it's brand new Okay, so what you want to do is you start right 
you have one of your edges right where the buttonhole starts over there in between and you're just going to press oops, with all your might so I tend to kind of like swing it around a little bit and I'll go for it sorry I'm sort of knocking my tripod as I'm doing this but not quite there yet so I really need to go for it this time around so start in the corner so you don't and you can kind of feel when it gives okay so if I can show you so you feel when it gives and unlike this one here where I used I used a seam ripper just to go through this was my test button hole and I wanted to check that the button would go through and I just used my seam ripper to just go through like that you can see how untidy this looks with all of these fraying bits of thread compared to when you use your fray stop and you use a chisel you don't you don't get the fray bits it's very nice okay so we've done this side now we need to do this side here so going back on there making sure we might match that at the edge and oh. so you want to be careful to do this on a flat surface I've raised this a bit so that the camera can actually see it better it's a lot easier when you don't have to record this and then again press it down as much as you can And then there you go. Got a hole opening. So I highly recommend using um, a chisel. Get yourself a good quality chisel and this will last you as long as you're going to be sewing. But just make sure to keep it in its sleeve so that it doesn't lose its sharpness or um, its bluntness. So you're going to do that for the rest of the buttonholes. And then I will show you how to sew a button perfectly a button that you'll be very very proud of okay so i've done all of them i just wanted to show you how really nice and very neat they look you see that and this is what you get if you don't use fray stop and you use your seam ripper this is how you end up getting these, um, I don't want to say nasty looking, but the kind of buttonholes that show that your garment um, has been homemade rather than handmade. So I think that it's worthwhile taking the time to put in your fray stopper letting it dry overnight and then use your chisel your chisel is just going to be a one-off purchase it's not the sort of thing that you need to buy over and over again and it's a really worthwhile investment to do those beautiful looking professional handmade looking buttonholes the final stage is we're going to be sewing buttons on the buttons that I'm using, I've harvested them from an old shirt of my husband's that um, was completely worn and the collar was gone, but the buttons were still good. So I'm using these buttons. You want a relatively short needle and quite sharp. And I do my buttonholes with a double thread. And my thread is no more than a foot. 
I never do more than a foot at a time because if you have your thread too long, it um, it tangles up and that ruins the look of your um, button button uh, sewing. And so what I do is I'll just tie a knot. This is your anchoring knot so that it just doesn't go all the way through. I'll tie a knot like that. And then I'll use my scissors to just cut just above where the knot is. Okay, and then I will use some beeswax, okay, um, on the thread. And what beeswax does is when you run your thread through beeswax and coat it, it will help to make your thread stay nice and straight, which reduces the chances of it um, tangling up. I bought this beeswax about, I don't know, five years ago when I started sewing. So this is going to last you a really long time. It's a really good investment. But once you've coated your thread in the beeswax, you then need to press it. And then when you press it, as you can see, it's got the beeswax on it. When you press it, your thread is going to become bone straight. And when it becomes bone straight, it is very less likely to get tangled up and create those unsightly knots. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like once you press it. So this is how I press my thread. So go there. You've got your hot iron. Just press it like that and then just run your thread through. I'm just going to do that again. So just press it and just pull your thread through. And this becomes very straight and it doesn't tangle and that's really important and it seems like um, a lot of steps to take but it isn't and it is so worth it to go through sewing your buttons as quickly and as neatly as possible I just wanted to show you that you can see you can't really see that choky waxy beeswax that was there before because when you press it it slightly melts away whilst it's straightening um, the thread and so, yes, yeah, so like I said, I've had this for five years. I reckon it still has another um, seven, eight years to go. And you want to get your beeswax in a sort of container like this, which makes it easier for you to run your thread through it. But it's a good investment. It doesn't cost an awful lot of money. And it makes a huge difference when you have to do any hand sewing, not having to worry about tangles um, happening. So, yeah. So for me, I always sew this first, the top button first. So I go from the top and then down and then I finish off with the cuffs. This top one is very important that when the shirt is buttoned up, these collar, upper collar stands are meeting right there. So this is why I start off with this one, because then everything will line up nicely after that. So what I do, and this is what I do, um, and I know in theory everything is supposed to line up perfectly, but we know that sometimes mistakes happen, um, too much tension is used, and you know there's a little bit of a difference. So I then, because we want this button to be here so that this, when it's buttoned up, is always perfectly on point or as close to perfectly on point as is possible. Okay, so I am going to put my needle through this point here. And... This is where it's going to be 
انکد And that's why we put that knot so that it doesn't go through. Now, before I go further, I'm just going to make sure. Oh, hello. I'm just going to trim off. No, I already did that. Aren't I clever? Okay. And then we're going to anchor. We're going to do just one more anchoring knot. So I personally like my buttonholes to look very neat on this side. So this is the whole purpose of it. And so I'm going to place my buttonhole so that it's going to be like that. So I'm going to get you through. And just use your thumb and your forefinger to hold it in okay so anchor that first one and then you're gonna have to feel around nope we're gonna try and do whole the second cross here and so that's what the button is going to look like and on the back it still looks neat and so what we'll do is we're going to do two more for each pair of holes which makes a total of six and I have found that that is enough to keep a button on there so because i'm actually trying to record this it does seem to take a little bit longer to do hang on let's see if i can do it. Two. you don't want to pull it too tight so you're not going like you're not tugging it you still want to give it leave it just a little bit loose so you just sort of gently get to the end and we don't want the button to be too tight Okay, that's the third one. So we're going to go to the other two now. This is the second one. Oops. And the third one, so that's three on each. I find that that's enough. And then what you want to do is you then want to sew, put your needle through and have it come out as close to the needle shank as to the thread shank as possible. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. And now at this point we're going to tug it and then we are going to turn this we're going to wrap this around six times and that will give us a little shank so that the button when it's buttoned up it doesn't pucker up underneath we're giving it a thread shank so then we go one two three four five six so those are easy numbers to remember six, um, six total here and then six wraps and then you sort of can you see how there's a little bit of a thread shank there that's what we want and then we sort of go back through 
like that. And now we turn to finish this off with two closing knots. So you use your needle to just go through some of the threads. So you go one, but then you thread your needle through this loop here before it goes through and then you pull and then I like to do just one more and you pull it through the, you put it through there and then that's it you're done and you just find your scissors and you snip see how neat that looks and that also looks really neat and it means that when you button it up There is no puckering underneath. And look at that. Okay. So we're going to repeat that all the way down until we've sewn all of the buttons on. So for your next one, what you do is button up your top button okay and line up your button plackets and then you can use your markers to just go marking um, on there you mark through so that you've got a point on here that shows you where to sew your button and then you can go and do that um, And then that makes sure that your button placket is nicely lined up. And that is how you sew it. And this is your final bit. For me, once the buttons have been sewn up, the very last thing is I put on my customized name tags. On shirts, I prefer to put them on at the bottom of the button placket to me that's just better than putting them on the neckline it's a personal preference and that's one of the joys of sewing your own garments you get to choose where you put your name tag and i'm just gonna hand stitch that on to there and if you hang around i will show you what this looks like on the recipient Give it a final press and you'll be good to go.